It's Jan Beta, and today we have something on the bench here that is not a retro computer, but a very retro receiver, a piece of uh, vintage audio equipment, which is another specialty of this channel. I didn't do a lot of these, but um, I am occasionally, whenever I come across something beautiful like this receiver, um, I'm going to make these videos and uh, do some restoration work on some vintage audio stuff or some uh, more modern audio stuff. I doubt that I ever will get more modern than, uh, say, the 90s or something like that. Um, this is from the 70s. It's, uh, it is a Pioneer stereo receiver model SX434, which is um, the smallest one of the series. Uh, it has, I think it has approximately 15 watts uh, output rating. So this one is 15 real watts, 1970s watts, would mean, which means it is, has quite some power. And uh, it's going to be able to power uh, some reasonably huge speakers. So we're gonna take a look at this nice looking receiver today. And I already determined, actually, this, this thing uh, works and I don't know if you can see it on camera but it lights up pretty dimly. The needle lights up, I think you can see that. This is the tuning uh, needle. Some of the lights on the scale here are still alright. And it also uh, outputs sound. I already determined that. So I'm going to give this a uh, some new capacitors, which is always a good idea because the old um, electrolytic caps tend to dry out with age and this is over, whoa, let me think, this is close to 40 years old, I think, so, and the capacitors are still original in there, I suppose. I haven't looked very closely inside yet, but yeah, let's see. Okay, I think it has four screws in the sides here. That's the... This is real wood, by the way. Okay, now we should be able, uh, we should unplug it, <laughs> obviously. So there we are. Okay, so it seems there's not much in there. Here's our filter capacitors for the um, AC that comes from the transformer. There's going to be a bridge rectifier somewhere beneath there. I hope the, the bottom lifts off. I'm gonna have a look at that in a second. Um, this is our radio receiver board, I think. This seems to be our tone control board down there. Which is also pretty neat. It's pretty tidy. It's a very tidy design. And they often had these uh, metal frames where everything was um, screwed into. They shouldn't make them like this anymore. This is this is a small, the, the bottom of the line model and it's built like a tank, basically. Which you don't see nowadays. Which is a shame, of course. Here's a um, chassis serial number or something. Don't really know. Probably so. And as you can see, the um, main circuit board, the main circuit board has um, additional connectors here that are probably for the other models that have more functions. So you can probably um, put in some additional components here and, and upgrade it to another model. In, in theory, of course. Um, the main thing that sets the um, different models apart is, of course, the um, amplification rate. So the, the other models um, will have higher power output. Okay, and sure enough, the bottom plate has screws that look like should be able to remove this whole bottom plate here. So I'm gonna take these uh, Eight, eight screws out and see what we get. Ta-da! There we go. 
So here's the inside. Interestingly, the Transformers only um, has this black cap um, from the top, but the bottom is exposed. And it's a, it's a flat wound transformer, it seems. Um, don't know if there's a, there's the wire wound transformers and this is a, made of flat sheets of copper that are um, insulated against each other. So that's a, another method of doing it, basically. This looks very clean and very tidy. It's very, it's a very nice design. I like it a lot. So I think, yeah, we should just um, go and replace some capacitors. But first, I think maybe <laughs> we should discharge the large um, filter caps here because we had it um, switched on. These are going to be charged with, um, I don't know which um, rating they are, but approximately 50 volts maybe. So it's better to discharge them before working on the rest of the circuit. And for discharging, I made this, which is a cable that has an insulated, uh, it's a banana plug and a little crocodile clamp clip, crocodile clip. And there is a resistor. Um, I think it's a 100 ohm resistor or something like that to um, not discharge the capacitors um, in one blow, but to add some, some uh, slow discharge to them. So I'm going to um, clip the clip here on the chassis, which is hopefully ground, it should be ground, and then uh, go about and touch the positives. Don't know which one is the positive, so I'm going to touch both. So, shouldn't measure any voltage across them now. Which I will check immediately. Look, what's DC? No, this one's dead. This one has 0.3 volts, which is negligible, uh, which is not much. Negligible? <laughs> negligible? <laughs> you know what I mean. And interestingly, this board, um, which I thought was the tone control board, seems to be the main board of the unit. There's everything on there, it seems. Uh, it's also connected to this um, heat sink. I don't know if you can see that. There's the heat sink where the um, transistors for the amplification are located. There are little rubber standoffs here to, to make the case, um, to make some space between the case and the, and the circuit board, which is very nice. There are all these um, wound connections here, wire wrap connections, which is pretty standard. It's still, it was standard and I think it still is standard in high quality um, amplifiers because it makes a really nice connection. Um, so we should take this whole board out. I think for that we have to take the, the faceplate off and the, I guess it's screwed in with the, um, with the potentiometers here in some way. Okay, after some inspection, it seems like the circuit board is connected with these screws here to the heatsink. The heatsink is connected to the top plate there. And uh, yeah, we have to unscrew the heatsink probably to get to the board. And we have to unscrew the, the potentiometers here. So first I'm going to take the take the pots off here. We have to, to clean them anyway, they're pretty grimy. This is the power now, we don't have to send to that. Oh, that came off pretty easily. There might be, we might do some work there. So, okay. Just pulling these off to pull off this one as well. Now they all come off easily, that's nice. I think I actually have downloaded a service manual for this, but I not gonna look at it just yet. You can, of course, which I probably should do, um, put a bit of uh, masking tape on there to make sure that you don't damage the case, which already is a bit scratchy. Doesn't matter much. 
So there's a, there's a ring and a nut. Ah, oh, there's screws on top there. Okay, so here's the screw and down here is the screw. And then we can probably pull off the, um, the front bezel there. Yep, there we go. Okay, there goes our front panel. So that came off pretty easily. There's not much dirt in here. We should clean it off a bit with a brush, I think. Um, yeah, and what we want to remove is this bottom thing here, and I think. Yeah, and it apparently it looks like we have to take these uh, three screws out and then we have the panel, don't know if you can see it, it goes through here and then we can lift out the the board after we take the um, uh, other screws out there. Yeah, maybe it's that easy. That's pretty, pretty nice. Pretty convenient. But these things were made to, to be serviced in the end, which again is the thing you don't find anymore. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's our whole circuit board there, loosey goosey. So let's remove the, I think we have to unscrew the heatsink and then we can take out our whole amplifier board there. So I might end up unscrewing these um, transistors from the heatsink because then we are going to be able to pull this forward and um, get it out there. Which is probably the easier way to do it. I hope so. <laughs> so let's see if we can move this out now. Should probably be able to. Should be able to bend it upwards. There we are. And now we have this in a position that we can work with to um, get to all the components. And we didn't even have to unwrap these connections here, which sometimes can be pretty painful because I have I have uh, a special unwrapping tool, um, but I don't have a wrapping tool. So we would have to unwrap them and I would have to solder them back on which is not a nice style, um, given that these look so nice and original. So try to avoid that. So now that's uh, refreshingly a uh, small number of capacitors. Um, maybe you've seen my uh, Maran's uh, restoration that I did recently. There were a lot of caps in there. So time for a recapping montage. I have my um, desoldering station heating up there and uh, I get asked a lot which station this is. It's a ZD915. I don't think it's in production anymore but um, there are some still around on Amazon and eBay and um, if you look for it it's pretty it's a good good um, station. There are um, Successors to this one, which are probably even better. I don't know the the numbers, but um, you are going to find them. They look basically look the same. There's different designs. There's different brands, but they are all basically the same um, thing. I'm going to link the video I made about this one in the corner. So uh, yeah, you basically know how this works. I'm going to start the music and do a little montage of me replacing the capacitors on this um, tone slash amplifier board that this is which is uh, i you could say it's the main board <laughs> so yeah that's probably what it is so that's what i'm gonna do let's get recapping So I just checked with the schematics and this is a 0.47 microfarad one, which I don't have in stock, of course, because it's an odd value for an electrolytic. Hmm. 
what to do. We can use, of course, we can use um, two of these 0.22 microfarad capacitors. Yeah, I think we can use them in parallel. I just double checked and if you take um, two of these in parallel, we should get um, 0.44 microfarad, which is pretty close to 0.47 microfarad. And we are going to go that way. It's going to look a bit crowded. Um, the next one here, the blue one, is also 0.47 microfarad that we're going to replace with two 0.22 microfarad ones, but it's going to be alright. So let's do that. Of course, there are more elegant solutions than this one, but this is going to work just fine. By the way, the caps can be very different sizes. This is a 1970s 330 microfarad one, 25 volts. This is a modern one. And it's not even the smallest one around. So. Okay, so this concludes the uh, mainboard recapping. Look at how small most of the caps are compared to the, the original ones. Let's uh, spray the um, pots here while we're in here so nicely. And as usual with this stuff, I'm using my favorite um, tuner spray, which is Tesla Nol. T6 contact on tuner spray. You can use deoxid, which is um, more readily available in the United States and Canada and elsewhere, I, I suppose. And I just go into these little cavities here. I can't really see with the camera in the way, but there is a little um, not just there for the switches where I can get into and then I just work Work the controls here And they should Be fine Input selector It's all pretty straightforward in this one so let's um, put this back in preliminarily and um, see if it still works, I guess. So now I don't know if you can see it, but there's this um, insulation material there that you have between the transistors and the heatsink. And it is really, it is insulating the um, heatsink against the transistors, otherwise you will get a short. 
and it probably also, if it's any good, is a bit of a thermal uh, conductor. So you want that between the um, transistors and the heat, heat sink in any case. And these things sound pretty sweet. It already sounded sweet. And after recapping, it should sound even better. It should sound more like it was supposed to sound. The capacitors are closer to the values that they are specified for. Or that the, the circuit is specified for. Yeah, okay. So I think it's, it's time for a little smoke test. And after that we're going to recap this thing. I don't, I'm not sure if I want to touch the radio part. I usually don't replace the caps in there if the radio works, but it's so easy to get in there that I might, yeah, I might do it on this one. On the other hand, my desoldering station is clocked at the moment, so yeah, I don't know. Okay, it's connected. Let's turn it on. Yeah, definitely works. A lot of bass and a lot of clear sound, so it definitely sounds better than before. I don't want to get in any copyright trouble here. <laughs> I don't know what what there was even as radio, so yeah. This sounds sweet. So next up we are trying to get this one out here. I'm going to try to get this board here out. There's only one screw that's visible. Don't really know if that's the only thing. Yeah. And we have we have these um, plastic clips that have to go. It's like these uh, modern type PC standoff things, I guess. <laughs> there we are. You can just push it through there, I guess. With a bit of patience that I lack. There we are. Okay, so there's our board. So, and here's uh, 330 at 50 volts, and what I'm going to do is to put in there two 221s in parallel, because I don't have a 331, 330 microfarad one, at 50 volts, which I think is going to be needed here, because of the power supply board. But I'm going to put, go for a bit higher capacitance, and uh, yeah, it's probably going to be fine, so we'll have to test that. And I think that's uh, it's going to, it's only a voltage uh, smoothing capacitor here. So it's going to be all right. And there's glue on, on a lot of those, so you have to wiggle them a bit. So here we are, 330 microfarad. It looks a bit bulgy, so we are going to put two much smaller ones in there. Which is pretty fun, but yeah, that's the way it is. Ah! <laughs> okay, it looks a bit strange, but it's gonna work! So that's the, the most important thing. Yeah. It's gonna work, it's gonna totally work. So let's solder these in. And our voltage is going to be smoother than it ever was, probably. So, okay, we have recapped this. Let's reattach it here. Yeah, that's quite sturdy. Okay, where's my screwdriver? 
another test, maybe. So I guess there are people out there who would kill me for um, doing this, like I did it. But hey, it's mine. I can do what I want. And electrically, it's all very well. So, okay, let's see. I'll turn this on, which goes something like this. And yeah, didn't explode. And I think I'm going to leave the um, radio reception board there as is. Because it's not going to get that much use anyway. And it is fine tuned to work um, with the scale there. And if you change the capacitances, which they probably have over the years, but um, you mess up the tuning a bit and would have to retune the little um, knobs there, which I'm not equipped for, so um, I'm just gonna leave it as it is. Because it works, there is radio reception, and uh, that's enough for me. Yeah, let's see about uh, the lights, the scale lights here, which uh, only work partially. Yeah. I think it might just be these screws here, which I'm going to try. At least I hope so, otherwise we have to take apart the whole front assembly there. But I don't know, maybe this is all it takes. Yeah, there we go. Oh, that's that's convenient. Did you see that? Two screws and you can take off the whole whole thing here. Okay, so as you can see, we can just turn this around and have our bulbs here conveniently located. So we can just take them out and insert new ones, hopefully. Okay, I turned off some of the um, bench lights here. Let's see. Oh, there's no. Oh yeah. That's more like it. Okay, so here's our faceplate that I am going to wash with some IPA. And you have to be careful that the silk screened um, markings don't wash off, but in this case, yeah, not at all. Some dirt on the inside here, so I'm going to put some there as well. Okay, got a nice uh, bucket of warm water with soap in it. I'm just gonna throw all the knobs in there, let them soak for a while, and then come back and uh, scrub them with a toothbrush or yeah something. <laughs> Okay, another thing we want to do is, of course, adjust it. So here's what it says. Nothing should be connected to the input jacks of the SX434. This is the um, service manual. I'm going to link that in the description. Um, and an 8 ohm dummy resistor should be connected across the speaker terminals. DC millivolt meter um, number 27. So we don't want to put on the back cover because we have to... Um, measure there. I think these jumpers are resistors that we can hook to and we are the there are test points that are also um, visible, little poles that we can hook our multimeter in and cut the jumper. This is basically adjusted by cutting the jumper so which I I hope we can avoid that but uh, yeah there's no um, there's no screw terminal or something or um, potentiometer to set the uh, bias. So here's my 8 ohms dummy load, basically just two uh, 100 watts resistors I got for cheap. These are, um, I don't know if they really are 100 watts, but I'm usually just using it for a short period of time, so they're gonna be okay. Um, 
Uh, screw to giant heat sink I salvaged from a, an old amplifier that was beyond repair. And I put on these screw terminals and some speaker, speaker wires. So I am going to connect this to the amplifier. And then we're going to see about the bias settings there. So got the dummy load hooked up there. And we want to measure between TP1 and 27. So I don't know which one is negative and which one is positive. I'm just going to go this way. Okay, I'm going to let this run for some time and see how much it is. 8 millivolts on one channel and it's around 12 millivolts on the other channel. So that's probably just fine. So as for the loosely sitting knob here, these knobs are two parts, so we can bend them slightly with a flathead screwdriver. So it's going to... You can easily break them, so don't overdo it there. But yeah, that should be enough, I guess. And if you break them, they are impossible to repair, basically, so you don't want that. So what I realized, I think our dialyzer broke, or I think our dialyzer might have broken. So we have to replace the dialyzer, which is another story. Otherwise it looks pretty nice. Yeah, this uh, happened before in my Sansui video. <laughs> I'm gonna link that video in there. Um, when I changed all the lights, I thought I would get away with um, changing the, the dial lights and our dial pointer light broke when I was finished. So same seems to have happened here. All right, so I think we can bend this apart. Then maybe take off the whole light there. Yeah, we have so there are little little notches there that we can probably bend apart, hopefully. Without wow, this is delicate. Without breaking the whole thing. Okay, so here's our little lamp and you I got in there with a screwdriver and bent these pins. And then you can basically take off the whole needle assembly here. And there's a light in there. Don't know if it's... yeah, there's a light. And what you have to do... is to insert a new light bulb in there. Okay, looking closer at this, I decided to put in an LED. And because an LED um, is best powered by DC voltage, and this whole light uh, construction is powered by AC voltage, we are going to put in a little uh, rectification circuit, like I did uh, with the Marantz um, receiver I restorated. Put that in here. Um, yeah, we're gonna do the same for all the lights and I think I'm going to replace the lights, um, the whole scale lights with LED lights too. Okay, here's our AC input. The blue wire and the black wire. And I'm just gonna cut these because uh, yeah, it's basically it's easier to do because these are wire wound again. So here's our AC in that we are going to attach to the AC in on our rectifier here. And I'm going to put some shrink heat shrink tubing over there as well to make it nice and clean. Okay. That's the AC input. <laughs> Inputs sorted. So now we are going to put the 
these on here. Okay, so I'm bending this a bit across these poles here. Because we want to solder it on nicely. And we want to put a little smoothing capacitor <laughs> with the right polarity on there too. Something like this, I guess. And then we're going to clip the leads. Yeah. It looks alright. So I add a bit, bit of solar on this side here. Yeah. Okay, so that's our little DC mod. So all the lamps should run on DC now. Let's see what voltage we get there. Okay, and let's see if our rectification circuit works. I have put this into DC mode and if I turn this on the lights will be a bit dimmer because you lose some volts if you rectify it. But uh, yeah, basically you have uh, I don't know around 6 volts or so from the 8 volts AC this was. Let's see how much it is. Okay, 5.7, and of course I'm holding the... There's even the, the polarities written on there, so... This is the right polarity, 5.73 volts. So I have these, which are basically um, the same form factor, but have little LEDs. I um, got these off eBay a while back. They are coming from Bulgaria, Bulgaria I think. Um, I used them in the Moran's restoration. And they worked pretty well, so I'm going to use these again. Oh, and by the way, I should mention that I um, purposely didn't change these big filter capacitors um, because I rarely see them go bad in these units. And um, they are large capacitors that are pretty expensive. They are only um, 3,300 microfarad on this unit. But I usually, usually they are larger capacity and uh, a lot more ex expensive. So I'm going to leave these in, as I usually do. And I usually don't have any problem whatsoever with that decision. Yeah, there we are. It looks great, actually. So let's see. And the brightness is pretty close to the original brightness, which is nice, of course. These LEDs are superior for several reasons, because they get less hot and they draw less current and, yeah, basically, they are whiter, so the, the blue is bluer, <laughs> which looks pretty nice on this one, I guess. So we're going to replace this one with the yellow one, because it's going to be the reddish glow there. So what I'm going to do here is to just cut off the old lamp and um, put on the LED after I have determined the polarity. <laughs> and then we're going to put the needle back on and stuff. Then I'm just going to clip it. So I'm using the, the multimeter to see which side is positive. Okay, turn it back on. The multimeter on volts DC. And the left side is the positive. So now we have to solder on our LED. And I'm gonna put some heat shrink tubing over there, of course, because it makes sense to protect this. And because this is an LED, um, it runs on 2 volts approximately for a yellow LED. And we are going to need a little resistor in there so it doesn't uh, burn 
instantly. So I'm going to put in a 470 ohm resistor because that's approximately what brings our 9 volts down to our 2 volts and it limits the current flowing through the LED. I'm going to attach it to the positive lead here. Um, yeah. Hope it works. And then we're going to make a little test and see if the LED really works. So now time for a little um, function test, I guess. Hope this works. Okay, fingers crossed, this works. Ah, there we go. It's pretty dim, but it's gonna be all right. And I guess it's pretty close to the um, original thing and see what it does. It fades out a little, which is pretty nice because our capacitor is in there that has um, a little bit of a load. Nice! Okay, so let's uh, shrink the heat shrink <laughs> and put it back together, I guess. Okay, so this is a very tight fit. <laughs> Okay, so needles on there. Looks all right. Let's see if it still works. Oh man, if it lights up. Yes, it does. And it doesn't look too bad at all. It's pretty nice. Okay, let's reassemble the whole thing and put it through some testing, I guess. Ta-da! Okay, for the nice part of testing this. Yeah, it looks glorious. And it sounds amazing. Great. Yeah, so I'm going to um, test this for some time. And yeah, but it seems that it's working perfectly fine. So I'm going to say thank you. Um, if you want to see more of this stuff, uh, consider subscribing to this channel. There's also a lot of retro computer stuff, which is my uh, main specialty here. Um, from time to time I have this vintage audio gear, which I just love working on. And yeah. That's it for today. Hope you enjoyed this. Hope there were some nice things to learn, maybe from my humble uh, skills working on these things. Thanks for watching. If you want to support me, you can check out my Patreon page, by the way. Uh, I'm Jan Beta. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye. <laughs>